Welcome back to the CryptoBot channel, everyone. My name is Josh, and right now is the calm before the storm because currently markets are preparing for some more volatility coming very soon due to the FOMC meeting, also known as a Fed meeting, which is happening in just a few hours from now. And so in just a moment, I'll be talking about what we can expect from this next Fed meeting in just a few hours and how it can affect markets. So all of that and more later in the video, definitely stick around. First of all, just giving you a really quick update on the US stock market. This right here is the NASDAQ 100 index on the daily time frame. And so far today, we're seeing a bit of red in the stock market as of recording this video. But currently, the NASDAQ 100 index is still holding above this important range of support, which is coming into play in between around 11,000 and 11.2K. And so once again, like I've been saying for the last few days, 11,000 for the NASDAQ 100 index is the level for the bears to break break in order to potentially signal the next leg lower. But until then, while the NASDAQ 100 is still holding above this important range of supports, then technically speaking, we are still in this bullish relief, but also this is still within a larger bearish trend as of right now. So right now, technically speaking, this is more of a shorter term bullish relief inside a much larger bearish trend that hasn't yet technically confirmed a reversal. But anyway, considering not much has changed in the US stock market, since yesterday, getting straight into the information about the coming Fed meeting in just a few hours. And in case you're wondering when exactly the Federal Reserve will announce their interest rate decision, that will happen at exactly 6 p.m. GMT time. And if you want to stay up to date in real time, so if you want to know what the new number will be as soon as it gets released, then make sure to follow me over on Twitter because over there, I'll tweet out that new number as soon as it gets released. And by the way, you can find a link to my Twitter in the description down below and also in the pinned comment if you want to stay up to date in real time. But anyway, just taking a quick look at the exact probabilities for this next Fed meeting in just a few hours from now. Currently, the futures market is pricing in an 11.8% probability of a 50 basis point hike and an 88.2% probability of a 75 basis point hike. So the 75 basis point hike is obviously the most expected outcome for this next Fed meeting. But considering the fact that some market participants are currently only pricing in a 50 basis point hike, what that means is that if we do end up seeing the 75 basis point hike, then those few market participants that were expecting only a 50 basis point hike would have to immediately readjust to the larger rate hike, which would mean some slightly bearish price action. But if we end up seeing only a 50 basis point hike, then that would be very bullish for markets because once again, the majority of the market has already priced in the worst out of the two options. And so if we only see a 50 basis point hike, then a large portion of the market would have to readjust to the more bullish out of the two options. And in case you missed my last video that I posted yesterday on this channel, I went into much more detail about all of this in that video. So if you missed it, definitely check it out. But basically, the main things that you need to know is that as of right now, the 75 basis point hike is technically the more likely out of the two options. And simply based on what the futures market has currently priced in as of recording this video, if we end up seeing that 75 basis point hike, we could see some slight bearish price action. But in that scenario, we might not see a lot of volatility considering the majority is already expecting that outcome. And so in that 75 basis point hike outcome, really one of the main factors that could end up moving markets could be what Fed Chair Jerome Powell says in his press conference, which happens around 30 minutes after the rate hike is released. But once again, in that more bullish scenario, if we only see a 50 basis point hike, which technically is not very likely to happen, but if it does happen, then simply based on what the futures market is currently pricing in, we're most likely going to see a lot of bullish price action, most likely a volatile move to the upside if we only see a 50 basis point hike occur. And once again, if you want to know what that interest rate number will be as soon as it gets released, then make sure to follow me over on my Twitter for real time updates. But anyway, getting into the Bitcoin part of this video, this right here is the daily Bitcoin to US dollar chart. And right now, the price of Bitcoin is still experiencing this short term cool off after that bullish move over the last one week. And obviously, for those of you who have been watching my videos over the last few days, this sort of price action right 
flat here was to be expected because we're seeing reduced bullish momentum in these daily Bitcoin price oscillators. And what these signals actually mean for the price of Bitcoin is simply a short-term cool-off, which is most likely going to be either choppy sideways price action or a slight pullback in the price of Bitcoin, which is exactly what we've seen over the last few days. And once again, as of right now, these are still flashing the same signal. So I'll still be expecting this moving forward, although the outcome of the Fed meeting could change what happens here. And so, of course, that's just another important factor to consider here. But based on these indicators alone, then we're most likely going to continue a little bit more of a short term call off here on the daily time frame. But anyway, zooming into the shorter term, taking a look at the four hour Bitcoin chart. And right now, as of recording this video, the price of Bitcoin is just holding onto this horizontal level of support, which is sitting at around 20.3K approximately. And this is obviously happening just after we got a double rejection from the golden pocket level of resistance, which is still sitting at around 20.9K to 21K. And so as of right now, those are still the immediate short-term support and resistance levels that I'm currently watching. But if the price of Bitcoin breaks below that level of support, then the next support to the downside that I'll be watching is sitting at around 19 .7 to 19.8k, then around 19.1k, then around 18.7k if we break the prior levels of support first. And as for resistance, once again, we still have resistance at close to $21,000 per Bitcoin. And anything above that level, if we see a confirmed breakout, then the next resistance to the upside that I'll be watching is sitting at around 21.7k and around 22.7k. And now in terms of the price trend itself, just based on the price action alone, technically this is still a bullish trend because we're still forming higher lows and higher highs as of recording this video. But once again, like I've been saying for the last few days, if you're looking at the four hour Bitcoin price oscillators, these are telling us that we're due to see reduced bullish momentum. And obviously over the last few days, this is exactly what we have seen as expected. But as of right now in the four hour Bitcoin price oscillators, at the moment, we're beginning to see the histogram within the MACD indicator rise towards the zero level, which is showing reduced bearish momentum in the short term, but is still technically more bearish than bullish as of right now, because it's still sitting in the negative territory. And right now, if you're looking at the four hour Bitcoin RSI, just in the imminent short term, based on what we've seen over the last day or so, this is pretty much chopping around sideways, looking extremely neutral. And it's also chopping around sideways at the neutral level, which is 50 in the RSI. And so just in the imminent short term, we're likely going to see a bit more choppy sideways price action up until the Fed meeting, where once again, we could see another volatile move based on the outcome. But anyway, now getting into the Ethereum part of this video, this right here is the daily Ethereum to US dollar chart. And just like I said on the daily Bitcoin charts, right now, the price of ETH is still playing out a short term call off as expected, because just a few days ago, these daily Ethereum price oscillators, specifically the daily Ethereum RSI was reaching into overbought territories telling us that we're due to see a short-term cool-off on the daily time frame. And once again, like I've mentioned almost every video over the last one week, I've been comparing this breakout to this previous breakout that we saw back in July, because obviously what we saw back here was the price of ETH go from a lot of bearish price action into choppy sideways price action. And at that time, that was looking like a possible bear flag until the point where we saw a confirmed break above resistance, which was basically a bullish confirmation signal on this chart telling us that we're starting another uptrend on the daily time frame. And now if you're looking at the more recent example, once again, we went from a lot of bearish price action into more choppy sideways price action, which was looking like a possible bear flag up until the point where we saw a confirmed break back above 1.4K, which was this line of resistance, because that breakout above 1.4K acted as a bullish confirmation signal telling us that we're likely entering into another bullish trend on the daily time frame, kind of similar to what we saw back here. But just like we saw in this previous breakout back in July, we reached a point where the RSI got close to overbought territories and that we'll due to see a bit of a short term call off on the daily time frame. And once again, like I've been saying for the last few days, that's basically the stage in this breakout that we're potentially at right now based on these price oscillators showing extremely similar signals to what we saw back then. But anyway, zooming into the shorter term, I'm taking a look at the four hour Ethereum to US dollar chart. And right now, the price of ETH is currently running into some horizontal support, which is actually this previous golden pocket level.
level of resistance, which is coming into play in between around 1550 to 1560. And this is of course happening just after we saw a rejection in the price of ETH from this horizontal level of resistance up here, sitting at around 1650. And so these are still the immediate short-term support and resistance levels that I'm currently paying attention to for the price of ETH. But if we see a confirmed break below this level of support, below around 1550, then the next support to the downside that I'll be watching is sitting at around 1470 to 1480. Anything below that, then I'll be looking towards around 1410, then around 1330, then around 1270 to 1280. And as for resistance, once again, we still have this Fibonacci level of resistance sitting at around 1650, but anything above that level, if we see a confirmed breakout, then I'll be looking closer towards around 1.8k, which is close to where that local high is sitting at. And as of right now, the price trend itself just in the short term is technically still a bullish trend because we're still forming higher lows and higher highs as I've recorded in this video. But with that being said, like I've been saying for the last few days, we are losing bullish momentum in the short term because for example, the four hour Ethereum price oscillators at the moment are showing more bearish signals as of right now than bullish signals. For example, right now, the histogram within the four hour Ethereum MACD is currently still sitting in the red. And in fact, this is looking slightly more bearish than the Bitcoin four hour MACD because unlike the four hour Bitcoin MACD, which is currently showing reduced bearish momentum in the histogram as the histogram is rising towards the zero level, the four hour Ethereum MACD on the other hand is basically sustaining in these negative territories. And so once again, as of right now, this is technically looking slightly more bearish than the four hour Bitcoin MACD. And something similar can be said about the four hour Ethereum RSI because this is clearly currently in a downtrend. And even just over the last one day, we've continued to see the four hour Ethereum RSI drop lower while the four hour Bitcoin RSI, for example, is basically chopping around sideways. So once again, Bitcoin in the imminent short term is looking more neutral, if anything else. But Ethereum just in the imminent short term is looking slightly more bearish than bullish as of right now, just in the imminent short term. But once again, that could change depending on the outcome of the upcoming Fed meeting in just a few hours. And if you want to know how to maximize your profits in crypto, no matter if the price is going up, down, or simply chopping around sideways, then make sure to check out these videos popping up right here on your screen. The video in the top left of your screen shows you how to make money in crypto if the price is going either up or down in a bullish or bearish trend. And the video in the bottom left of your screen shows you how to make money in crypto if the price is chopping around sideways. But anyway, that's everything that I have to say for today. I really hope you enjoyed and I'll see you all in the next video.